Hey guys, it is episode 13 of the NCAA Challenge, and uh, last time I was here, I gave an epic beatdown as Oregon against LSU, and this time I am Michigan against Alabama, and uh, I was I was excited again in back-to-back -back games because this guy was 45 and 45, so I was facing a quote-unquote uh, savvy veteran. So I was thinking, all right, I'm gonna play against a really good guy, really good player, even though it's only 500. You know, overall, he still played. He's played a lot of games. He's seen a lot of things over the course of this uh, NCAA game and all the months it's been out. And uh, I don't blame Peyton Alabama because I was the home team. So also he came into the match and saw me as Michigan. So I imagine he decided, all right, I'm gonna go against Al I'm gonna go with Alabama to play against this guy. And uh, so I was hoping to get a good game going. And I started off really good. I got a pick there. Unfortunately, after this play right here, I could not get those three yards or four yards to get a touchdown. So I went for a field goal. And I was actually worried that um, this guy, if I didn't score touchdowns every single time, I was going to get like blown out or like just, you know, a really tight game. So I was a bit upset about that. And then I realized he's quickly, he was a, a no huddle team and he was a fourth down kind of player. So then I get this pick right here, touchdown, pick six. And I have to admit, I, not admit, but I have to say, uh, I don't know how they play in real life. I've been saying this a lot about the past teams and how they play in real life and all that, but uh, Michigan's corners in this game were outstanding. They were getting picks, and I had it on balance. I didn't even have it on conservative or aggressive. It was just on balance. And they got, I think, about maybe two or three picks in this game, maybe even four picks. I'm not even, I'm not even sure. So they were really good. Um, another thing is I have to correct myself. I know in the last video I said the only good team I played with before Oregon was UCLA, and as someone remind me, that's totally not true. I played as USC, Wisconsin, and Stanford, and you can even argue Texas A&M were all good teams. And those are all better than uh, UCLA, no doubt, no question about that. But at the same time, in terms of rating, I think they're they're still not on Oregon's level. Oregon is on a whole other level. I think any top five team in the game is just on a whole other level. And right here, I put this uh, play in because I was originally do the play action boot play, which I know you guys all know about this formation. And that song spread out as a uh, linebacker. So I was like, all right, he knows what I'm going to do. So I need to come out and change it up. Went to uh, four verts. I went deep past this little Seattle player right there. And uh, if I had waited in the pocket a little bit longer, I think A or RB might have been open even. And it might have been an easier throw to make. But I just made a quick read through to X. So I'm on the side, I caught the ball. First down. And here's an option play right here. I should have held a little bit longer because I didn't realize it was a switch player so quickly. But whatever, it is what it is. And I have to admit, um, this game could have been a lot different at this point. Like right, this throw right here could have been picked off very easily um, I made a lot of I wouldn't say dumb throws but I made some throws that I shouldn't have made and I got really lucky that I completed them or they weren't picked up there's a like knockdown or incomplete and I give credit to all American all American Depot for that so I'm sure if it was Heisman uh, it probably would have been easily just gone the other way and at this point I'm up 17 nothing for halftime and I was like all right this guy isn't too bad uh, he loved doing the uh, runs out of the no huddle Hand it off to Lacey. By the way, Lacey is a man. He is a grown man in this game. He was breaking tackles like he was nothing. And I was like, damn. So I know. And then right here, McCarron. I'm sorry. AJ McCarron is not going to break a tackle by a defensive lineman and run for another like 10, 15 yards. I'm sorry. This is not going to happen. That, that just made me mad. And this player here, Lacey right there, that's what I'm talking about. Grown man. Dude broke like three tackles and still got, I mean, got a few yards out of it, but he made. He was doing work against me, uh, mainly because I was respecting the pass a lot more than the run, which, you know, was probably a problem because Lacey is definitely a really good, like, great running back. But at the same time, Alabama, they have receivers out there, so you got to respect the pass, too. They're one of the teams where you got to respect the run in the pass, and I shouldn't have done better. But this is another thing I want to mention here is you should never quit before halftime, even if it's like 10 seconds on the clock, just keep going. Because I got this huge return right here. Came out, five wide, I was going to do four verts. Look for a quick read. I saw, uh, who was this? Roundtree? Yeah, he got pressed. So I was like, I'm going to throw it to you once you beat the press. And then I knew Gibbons uh, had a huge leg because he kept on booting kickoffs like all the way into the end zone. So I knew once I got that Hail Mary pass off and got out of bounds, and that was a really good move by Ryan. Two move by Ryan. That I had a chance to get a field goal. So instead of being going into halftime 17 to 7, I kept pressing, and I got 27 lead in halftime. So you got to keep, you know, keep going. Don't just like take a knee or run the ball if you're not going to get anything. But at the same time, don't take unnecessary risks, risks and just throw it up. 
and when you have no chance in getting anything completed, and like I did right there, I just threw a pass for no reason, I got picked off, and I swear, once I threw that pick, and he returned it that far to uh, get into my red zone, red zone pretty much, I was like, this is this is the worst thing that happened to me, because I thought I was going to like crumble under the pressure of playing a guy's 45 and 45, luckily I got a pick right back, and I was doing okay, and this guy, this is what I love about playing with teams that have players like Shoelace, who people know you want to run with him. You want to use the speed, get out of the pocket, run, trim for like 15, 20 yards or whatever. Because they're used to people doing that against them. And for me, I mean, yeah, I love a mobile, I love a mobile quarterback to run around with. But at the same time, I'm a passer. Like, I would love to throw for 400, 500 yards on you and not run even for 50. So when he rushes on like two guys and he puts like two other defensive linemen in the spies or his own coverage, I'm going to sit back there all day long and wait till my receivers break off their routes and your cornerbacks don't even know where the hell they went and I throw it to them and get a huge gain out of it. And I'm pretty sure he did that about two or three times in this video that I'm going to show you and I'm thinking throughout the entire game he might have done like four or five times and um, which is fine by me. I'll throw that all day and this is something I need to work on is sitting more patient in the pocket because I know uh, I think on one play I signed this video uh, the play, I was getting no pressure, no rush on me, but all my court receivers were being covered really well. So I rolled out, and instead of uh, sitting back behind the line of scrimmage, I attacked the line of scrimmage, and of course, receiver broke open, and but I got sacked on that play, so I was like, all right, whatever. And here, this is a bad play by me, pursuit angles by both safeties. I got turned around. And the game's not quite over yet. I'm, I'm at this point, I'm, I'm definitely kind of nervous. Uh, once he got that pick on me earlier in the game, I thought he was going to score at that point. And he didn't. This is another player right here where I just got bought, bought time through downfield. Then I got to pick back. So, like, I'm still 27. I'm fine. I didn't score a touchdown. It's 20 to 14. I'm like, all right, now I'm a little weird. I need to score a touchdown right here to ease my, my worries. And then I got that off. Again, he wasn't rushing me that well. So, I'm going to throw it downfield. Touchdown. And I was like, all right, this is good. This is good. I'm happy with 27 14 lead. And uh, even, I think it was Brad, I think, mentioned, I think, a three different occasions in this fourth quarter when I scored. Spoiler alert, I score a lot of times in the fourth quarter. Uh, he keeps saying this is a good ice the game, it's ice the game. Well, no, Brad, didn't ice the game. I was still worried. <laughs> and then I guess good run by Ryan. And I don't know if he was a good running back or not. But Michigan, I didn't really run the ball that well just because he did a, I give him this, he had a really good run defense. And again, he's just way buying time. I'm just buying time myself in the pocket. Uh, he had a really good run defense, and I had, I had a trouble. I had trouble trying to get holes open and stuff like that. So I just stopped trying, really. I just kept, I just kept passing the ball. And another thing is that, to another point about the whole, if you're a you know, spy, a defensive lineman, or whatever, when I do it, I like to have maybe, and this is just a really bad run. Basically, I run my entire defense. I did bad for strangles my safeties again. And he got me a few times with, with those no huddle draws and, you know, runs off the side. He got me a few times with that. And real quick, this. This right here, this is what I wanted out of Oregon in my last challenge video. This is what I wanted. Instead, Robinson gave it to me. This is why I wanted that. That feel of adrenaline doing a great read option. It's like, yes. I, I was pumping my fist a little bit. I was like, yeah, that's right. That's a great read option by me. <laughs> but like, I'm, before I get off track here, uh, you know, I like to do either defensive ends going to contain and I'm going to rush up the middle, or I'm going to put one of my D tackles in the spy and rush three guys. But I'm never, ever going to put. A situation where I'm only going to rush with only one or two guys. That's, that's just, you know, ask for trouble. And right there, AJ McCarron got me again on the scramble. I got upset with that. Like, come on, AJ McCarron is not going to do that to me. Uh, another thing is that, back to the whole thing about the rushing and, you know, watching a mobile quarterback, is that uh, don't be a defensive lineman unless you're really, really good. I mentioned before, even one of my first few challenge videos, that I, that's why I play as a safety and linebacker because I can't do defensive lineman, is that. I mean, you're better off if you're going to rush only one or two guys is to let the computer handle that because the computer is about 10 times better than you are in that situation. You're better off being a safety so you can cover the receivers when they break off their routes and you're basically just, you know, back in football at that point. So, it's in the video and uh, as you can see, it was the fourth quarter of just back and forth scoring, back and forth scoring. Uh, really big plays too. But I, I felt pretty good. At, once I got that 28-14 to 14 lead or 27, whatever it was, I felt pretty confident at that point. I was going to cruise in. And, I mean, the defense was pretty much, like, non-existent. But it was a good game. Uh, pretty good game overall. So I felt pretty content with it. And uh, I feel like now going forward, 
I'll play some of the uh, bigger boys, more experienced guys. I won't be quite as nervous going in because I just play a little bit conservative in the third quarter instead of continuing my usual offense where I attack downfield. So going forward, I'll be more confident and I'll attack the ball a bit more and have hopefully more good games like this so I'll get my own ranking up and play even more challenging players like this guy could have or should have been. So that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in episode 14.